Hello and welcome. My name is Eva and I'm an Education Specialist at Xero. Today I'm going to take you through the ins and outs of single touch payroll in Xero Payroll. Firstly, I'll explain what single touch payroll, also known as STP, actually is. Then we'll go through what you need to do to get your business up and running in Xero Payroll and opt in to STP. Lastly, we'll do a little troubleshooting on some common STP errors. Now before we delve into the tricky stuff, let's take a look at the filing process in Xero and just how easy and simple it is. In just a few clicks, you're able to report the pay run information straight to the ATO using a secure connection all without having to leave Xero. Now to show you this, we're going to look at Xero's demo company, which has been enabled with STP. Now everyone has access to their own version of the demo company, which is a practice environment that you can use to test things out before trying it in your real Xero organization. So I'm in the demo company here, and I'm going to click on payroll up the top, and from here, I'm going to click on the Pay Employees screen. Now in here is where you can manage all of your pay runs. Here you can see I have a draft pay run that I've actually set up earlier. I've gone in and I've made sure that my individual pay runs are fine, so I can now post it. Now let's select the draft pay run. So here I have my pay run. Now to post my pay run, I just need to click the post pay run button down the bottom. And I'm now going to click yes to confirm that I'd like to post it. And as you can see, the pay run has now been posted. After you post it, you can then see a green file button appear. So let's click the file button. So once you've posted a pay run in Xero, all you then need to do to be STP compliant is file the pay run to the ATO. We're now asked to confirm we have authorization to file. So simply click the checkbox and then click the button that says submit to the ATO. From here you can see the status is pending. Once it's finished, you will see that the status will change to filed. There are quite a few statuses, so visit Xero Central to see what comes up. And that's it, my pay run has now been filed to the ATO. Now that you've seen the filing process in action, let's step it back and look at what STP actually is. STP is an ATO initiative, and what it means for a business is that pay run information like wages and salaries PAYG and superannuation all need to be reported to the ATO on or before the payment date of each pay period using an online payroll system. Previously, this type of information was only reported at the end of the financial year in the form of payment summaries, so the good news is that you no longer have to do these. Employees can now see their year-to-date filings in their MyGov account at any time during the year for any job they've worked at instead of having to typically wait until your business completes the end of year financial process. So what actions do you need to take? Well, first you need software that can run payroll and connect securely to the ATO, and that's zero payroll. You then need to accurately enter employees' details into the software, like their date of birth and contact details, as this information is included in the digital filings to the ATO. Once you're all set up, you can process pay runs and pay employee wages and entitlements like superannuation and deductions. You can process terminations and manage employee leave requests as well. And lastly, the most important and biggest change is to ensure that salary and wages, PAYG and superannuation information are reported to the ATO each time an employee is paid, rather than just once a year and this should be on or before the payment date of the pay run. There are several plans which include payroll. It all depends on how many employees you need to pay. Firstly, there is payroll only. This is suitable for employers with one to four employees. 
Xero's payroll-only plan gives you a simple way to pay staff and comply with single-touch payroll. Now we also have our other business additions as well. Now with these additions, it means that not only will you be able to use Xero payroll, you will also be able to run your business's finances in Xero as well. Now for business additions, there's a starter plan where you can have payroll for up to one employee, the standard plan where you can have payroll for up to two employees, and lastly there's the premium plan where you can have payroll for up to 200 employees. If there are any accountants or bookkeepers watching, we also have a payroll cash book subscription as well. For further information on plans or pricing, visit zero.com forward slash pricing. So now let's go and set up the basics of Zero Payroll and then opt in to STP. So what you can see here is a brand new organization which includes payroll. We're currently on the dashboard which is our landing page in a Zero organization. I'm going to head straight to the payroll section by clicking the payroll menu up the top and then clicking on overview. Now here we can see a checklist of what needs to be done to get started with payroll. Firstly, let's select Add Organization Details. Now you might have already done this, for example if you're already using Xero for your business, but if not, there are a few fields that are required to fill out here in order to connect your business with the ATO. This information will also appear on your employees' pay slips. Now you'll need the legal trading name and ABN. For this, use the same details that are registered with the ATO. You'll need a postal address including postcode. Make sure that you enter the registered address for your business and a telephone number. Now it's important to have a landline number here so that the ATO can contact you on this number. And don't forget to click save before exiting the page. Now let's head back to the overview menu and take a look at the next item. So once again, I'm going to click on payroll and then click on overview. So the next step is to add payroll accounts. But before we do this, I'll actually need to add in a bank account in Xero first. This allows me to assign it to my payroll. So what we'll do, is I'll go to the accounting menu and then I'm going to click on bank accounts. Now the reason we have to add a bank account is because when you're in zero payroll settings where the accounts sit, you can't assign a bank account unless you've added it here first. So first I'm going to click on add bank account. And then select my account. Now what you need to do on this screen is add in your account name, the account type and account number. For today's demo, I just have some dummy information that I have put in. Once you've done that, we're going to click continue. And now you can see that a bank account has been successfully added. Now that we've added our bank account, let's go back to the overview. Now here you can see we have payroll accounts and pay calendars. So let's start with payroll accounts and we'll click add payroll accounts. Firstly under bank account, I'm going to select the bank account that I added earlier. Review the expense and liability accounts for PAYG, superannuation and wages to make sure that they're right for your business. Now Xero has some really great defaults set up, but if you have your own requirements, you can make sure they're mapped to the correct areas for your organization here. You can also do payroll tracking if you like, and there's also options to customize employee pay slips. Lastly, you also have the option to add a company logo, which will make your pay slips have a nice professional touch. Once you've completed that information, then go ahead and click save. 
Now we can move on to our payroll calendars to set how often and when you pay your employees. So the calendars tell the system your pay frequency. So let's click on calendars up here. Next we can move on to our payroll calendars to set how often and when you pay your employees. So calendars tell the system your pay frequency. To add a calendar, click add. And then choose the pay period. For this demonstration, I'm going to choose fortnightly. Next we'll select the start date. and also the first payment date as well. Now this is the first payment date that you want to start paying your employees. Zero will then give you a little update on when the pay calendar is starting and when your employees will be paid. So if you're happy with these details, click add. You can also have multiple calendars set up. So if you have some employees who are paid weekly and some who are paid fortnightly, you can add two calendars. Next we'll move on to the Holidays tab. Now the Holidays tab is already populated with all Australian public holidays, but if you do have a holiday that your organisation celebrates that needs to be added, this can be done here by clicking the Add Holiday button. Now some other things that you could look at include pay items. Now in pay items, you'll see items for earnings, deductions, reimbursements and leave. So the basics are already added in, which makes it easy to get started. But you can always select add as well to add anything additional to suit your business needs so that they're available next time you go to process a pay run. And lastly, we have superannuation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add superannuation fund. Now you can either choose from a regulated superannuation fund or a self-managed super fund. For today's demo, I'm going to select regulated super fund and then I'm going to type in the name of my fund. Now, as you can see, when you start to type in the name of your fund, you'll have quite a few options that will come up to choose from. I'm going to choose REST. Now a good thing about this and a good check to do is each regulated superannuation fund has something called a USI. A USI is a unique superannuation identifier which uniquely identifies a fund and no USIs are the same. So a great double check to do to make sure that you're paying into the right fund is to make sure that the USI matches the fund that you've selected. Now for this demo today, I'm going to put in a dummy employer number. Once you've completed this section, you can then click add. And now you can see that we have successfully added a superannuation fund. Great, so let's head back to the Payroll Overview menu and see what's left on our list. Now from here, you can see that Pay Calendars has now been ticked as we were able to complete it in the Payroll Accounts section. Next, we're going to have a look at adding an employee. So first, let's click Add Employees. So here we can add our first employee. You will see on this screen there are some mandatory fields and some optional fields as well. So you will need to complete all the mandatory fields to be able to add an employee successfully. Firstly, you'll need the full name and the date of birth as well. You also need an address. Now take particular note of the mandatory fields as we're going because leaving these out can lead to errors later on. For SDP filings to work, it's especially important to have a valid postcode here. There's also a section to add an emergency contact if you do wish to do so. Next, we're going to click Save to continue. Next up, we're going to have a look at the Employment tab. 
On this tab, you can enter the employee's start date. Now this is the day that they started with your business. You can also add in the payroll calendar. For this demonstration, we have fortnightly. You can assign an employee group and a holiday group as well. And you can also select their earnings rate. From this screen, we can also add in a superannuation membership. So let's do that now. I'm going to click add a super membership. And from here, I'm going to click the fund that I added in earlier. Now for this demonstration, I am going to use a dummy employee number. And from here, I'm going to click save. Next, we're going to move on to the Taxes tab. So now I'm on the Taxes tab. This is where you can record tax file number declaration details. Firstly, you can select an employment basis for your employee. Now for this demonstration, I don't have a tax file number for my employee. So under where it says TFN exemption, I've selected TFN pending in order to actually post a pay run. Now below, you can see you have a few options you can choose depending on the tax file number declaration details that are required. You have the option to select HEX or HELP debt for your employee, an upward variation, and even a withholding variation and more. Now if you wish to file this information to the ATO now, you can just click File Now. If not, you can simply save and file later. So for today, we're going to click Save and we're going to move on to the next tab. The next tab to look at is Leave. Now in the Leave tab, you can assign leave types like annual leave and personal leave and also choose how it accrues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click assign default leave types. Now from here, you can see I have annual leave and personal carers leave. What I'm going to do is click on annual leave. From here, you can click a calculation method so we're going to have based on ordinary earnings. You can include the hours of leave accrued annually by the full-time employee and also the hours a full-time employee works in a fortnightly pay period as well. Once you have selected all of this information, you can click save. Next, let's have a look at bank accounts. Now in bank accounts, you can add an employee's bank account that their salary will be paid into and you can also have up to three bank accounts. Next, let's have a look at payslips. Payslips will show you a history of payslips once we actually start posting pay runs, so there's nothing there at the moment. Now let's have a look at pay template. Now pay template is where you can create a template of an employee's regular pay items like their ordinary earnings, deductions and superannuation. The template will then populate when a pay run is created. So let's quickly add in some information here. Firstly, I'm going to select add earnings line and I'm going to click on ordinary hours and then click OK. From here, I have the option to add in my hours and the rate as well. If you have any recurring deductions, you can add them under the add deduction line. Next, I'm going to add superannuation. Now, in the superannuation line, this will need to be entered as my employee is over 18. So for this, I'm going to use the statutory rate as my calculation type, because that way Xero will automatically update the rate. Once this is done, you can select OK. And you can also add a reimbursement line if you have any reimbursements you'd like to include as well. Once you have completed this section, let's click Save. 
Next, we have opening balances. Now, opening balances are where you've come to zero partway through the financial year. You can report employee year-to-date balances here. And lastly, we have the notes tab. This is where a payroll admin can report details about their employee. For example, an increase in wage or a change in an employment basis. You can add a note here. Now, employees can't see these notes. It's only available to payroll admins. And that's it. We have set up our first employee. Now we can head back to the overview and opt in to single touch payroll, which is the last item on our checklist. So once you've clicked set up STP, follow the prompts to opt in. Now the first step is to click opt in for tax year 2020. Now next is to review the organization details. This information is pulled from the organization settings. If it's not correct, just update the details and then continue to the opt-in process. Now I can see this screen that says agent details as I have a different zero login to you, so it may look different to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on file STP and I'm going to click on Simba's Samba. Once I've done that, I'm then going to click continue. Okay, so this step is all about connecting your Xero organization to the ATO. Now you can either call the ATO or you can use Access Manager. Now once you've spoken to the ATO, confirm that you're actually connected by clicking here. You'll notice in this demo there is a dummy SSID. When you go to your own Xero, you will have your own SSID. So when you call the ATO to connect, you will provide them your own number. Once you've spoken to the ATO, confirm that you're connected by clicking here. And that's it. You're now ready to begin filing your pay runs to the ATO as part of single touch payroll compliance. All you need to do from here is click register. Now, if we go back to the payroll overview screen, you'll also be able to view pay runs, leave to approve and much more once you're connected. Now that you're up and running with single touch payroll, I want to touch on a few of the common reasons that filings don't go through. The single touch payroll screen in Xero shows you the status of STP filings, which may be pending, sent to ATO, filed, partly filed and failed. Here are some of the common errors we've seen come through our support team at Xero. Now it could be that the business has not set up a connection with the ATO, Organisation details are incorrect, such as ABN or postcode. And lastly, employee details like their address or date of birth are missing or incorrect. Most of these errors can be avoided by making sure that you're set up correctly. But don't worry, if you do get a failed pay run, the user who submitted the file and the subscriber will receive an email notification to let them know. You'll also be able to access it in the single touch payroll menu under needs attention. And in the email, it will also include an ATO error code, which will help you troubleshoot the cause of the fail. And you can use your essential just by entering that code in the email. And you can use your essential to find the help article to assist you as well. You can also submit a request to our support team to help you out. Now, if you have been advised that it is an ATO error and not a zero error, you'll need to contact the ATO directly. If you do need to fix a mistake with the pay run, there are three ways you can do this in zero. The first is to revert the most recent posted pay run per pay calendar to draft. You would edit what you need to and then you can file it again or to the ATO. The second is to use an unscheduled pay run and then you would file this to the ATO like you would a normal pay run. And lastly, you can make an adjustment in the employee's next normal pay run. It's up to your business which option is best suited for the type of adjustment you need to process. And if you're not sure, reach out to your bookkeeper or accountant who can help you decide. Now let's recap what has been covered today. We've taken a look at what single touch payroll, also known as STP is, You've learned how to add organization details, add payroll accounts and add employees. These are some of the actions your business will need to take 
or has taken in order to get on board with STP. We've gone through the basics of setting up zero payroll in order to opt in to STP successfully. We've also covered opting in to single touch payroll. And lastly, we've looked at some common STP errors. Now, as I mentioned, if you do need help, you can raise a case in Zero Central and one of our specialists will be able to help you out. You can also access any topics on payroll under the learning tab when you're in Zero Central. And we've now reached the end of the session. Thank you for watching.